coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. Where is the impact that we're having? When you compromise this, you get what we've got. And we're getting it in spades. Bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name. Through the power of Jesus' name, you and I as believers have the power over the enemy. And that's a great thing to know because today we're bringing you a brand new teaching. It's entitled Crossing the Line. I'm so excited to be able to share this new message that God has given me to share with his people so that you can see the dangers as Christians sometimes when the enemy wants to seduce us and tempt us into going across the line. There's so much teaching in this, I don't want to keep you. So get out the Word of God, go with me, and let's hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. Uh, crossing the line. It's very interesting. So let's get in the Word and see what the Holy Spirit has to say to the church today. Revelation 12, 7 says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they did not prevail. I like that, don't you? Satan and his demons didn't prevail. But they, uh, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Please notice that. Let me read it again. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Isn't that amazing? The church has been given God's authority over Satan to cast him down. Matthew 16, Jesus is speaking to, to his disciples and he says, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Literally, King James says the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church. God has given the church, that's us Christians, authority over the devil, over sin, and over all the powers of the enemy. Can I get a witness? And so there will come a day when the church, the glorious bride of Christ, will come into her identity and realize who she is and the purpose that she's been given and the authority that she's been given in Christ's name and she will overcome the serpent the devil now remember in the garden you had Eve going up against the serpent but then see there's always a type and a shadow there's the concealed in the Old Testament and there's the revealed in the New Testament so you had the serpent beguiling the woman Eve but in the New Testament the bride of Christ, the bride of the last Adam, see where it's going, is going to overcome the serpent and cast him down. Now, it may look like man lost it and God forfeited a win there in the garden, but God has a plan. And sometimes it takes him a few millenniums to get around to showing us what his plan is, but he gets there eventually. And so we will see the bride of Christ come into her own and overcome the devil, and he will be cast down out of the second heavens and down to the earth. And then it reads on, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. It's going to be a happy time for Christians because we're going to be out of here. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down. You know, he's been cast down at this point, having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. We have authority as Christians. We have authority as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? We have authority as citizens of America. And we know our constitutional rights. We know what, what we've been given our inheritance from our forefathers and those that ha generations that have gone before us and our military who has shed their life's, life's blood for us, we know the authority that we have, but why aren't we exercising our authority? Turn with me to Hosea chapter 4, please. Hosea 4, 6, it says, uh, let's start in verse 4. 
Now let no man contend or rebuke another, for your people are like those who contend with the priest. Therefore you shall stumble in the day. The prophet also shall stumble with you in the night. I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have rejected the knowledge or the truth. I will also reject you from being my priest for, for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. We cannot, we must not, we must never abdicate this word. We must not compromise it. We must not settle for something other than this. We as the living church of the living God, we must stand on this word and declare this word no matter who, who is offended by it, no matter who rejects us, no matter who turns against us. We have got to stand on this word because this word is our only authority to dethrone Satan out of his kingdoms and to pull him down so that we can go up. we got to know who we are and we've got to act on that. Can I get a witness? But he says here, Hosea is speaking under the, the Spirit of God, says that God's people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. If you don't know who you are and you're not discipled as a Christian, you're not going to know the authority that you have as an individual Christian, much less as being a part of the body of Christ. The church has been given the highest authority on earth. Now, there's some, there's some governmental agencies and there's some places uh, in, in America like Washington and, and uh, you got the leader of Russia and you did Iran, all these other nations, and they think they have high authority and, and it is true that the White House is the highest office in the land, but can I tell you, none of these authorities has the authority on earth like the church of Jesus Christ. We've got to understand, we have been given endowment from on high, not from man. It came down from God, and he gave us a mantle. He said, when I go up, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will pray, and the Father will send the Spirit. When he comes, you will be endued with on power from on high, and you will be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the earth. And I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy whatever you bind on earth i'll back you up and i'll bind it in heaven whatever you loose on earth i'll back you up and i will bind loose it in heaven whatever you want whatever you need i am here to provide it for you Amen. who told you you had no power whenever the bible is taken away from christians it strips us of our authority now, the church not only has the highest authority in the land, the church has the honor of serving and representing the God of all time and creation in this world. What an, a high honor that we as Christians and as the church have that we can let people know about the Lord and about our Father who is God, who is Lord of all, we have that honor and that privilege to represent him, to be his mouthpiece, his hands and feet in the earth. Isn't that awesome? We have the privilege of leading a sinner to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and watch before our very eyes as the power of the Holy Spirit transforms them from being lost and blinded to becoming children of the Most High God and seeing the burdens just roll off their shoulders. The guilt and the shame leaving them. Let me ask you this question. Could the enemy of the church be keeping believers and the church as a whole from realizing our authority and our potential? Absolutely. Jesus set a principle in Matthew 7. He says, you will know them by their fruit. Not the name of their denomination, not, a name, not according to the hierarchy of their denomination. You will not know them by, by their uh, religious creed or their doctrinal beliefs. You will know them by their fruit. He set a precedent when he spoke that truth out of his mouth. All we have to do to see if we fully, the church fully realizes and are walking in our authority as children of God as the church of, of the living God, is to look at the impact that we're having in the world today as salt and light. 
That's sobering, isn't it? Where is the impact that we're having? When you compromise this, you get what we've got. And we're getting it in spades. That's why the church is in the shape it's in, and that's why the world is in the shape it's in, because we've compromised it. We've backed off from it, and we've, we've swapped it out for, for fluff and stuff. Right? Now look at what we're living with. Where's the salt? The salt has lost its savor, according to the Word of God, and it's good for nothing, and it's being trampled underfoot. The world has lost its respect for the church. There is nothing sacred anymore. Shout me down or amen me one. This is the truth. The church has, when we abdicated this, when we swapped out the word of God for something, maybe, maybe a 30-minute segment on what the best movie of the week is, instead of preaching the truth because we were afraid we would lose some people and lose the tithe dollars with them, what has happened now is we have lost the respect of the world. There was a time when the world respected the church in America, but that is no more. Anything goes. Nothing is sacred anymore. And we brought it on ourselves. If we, the church, are not doing as much as the early church in reaching and transforming the nations of the world, then this says that the modern church is being prevented from walking in the fullness of God's authority in the earth. Let me say that again. If we, the church, the body of Christ, are not doing as much as the early church did, and look at all the technology, look at how much the church has grown in 2,000 years. If we're not reaching the nations of the world and transforming the nations, then this says that the modern church is being prevented from walking in the fullness of God's authority in the earth. So the question is, why? Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy 2 verse 4. Look at it very carefully. He's talking to Christians. He says, no one engaged in warfare. Are you engaged in a warfare? Every one of us are, whether we want to realize it or not. Sticking your head in the sand is not going to make the warfare go away. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself, look at it, with the affairs of this life. Why? That we may play, please him who enlisted him as a soldier and also if anyone competes in athletics he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules we stopped playing by the rules as a church of the living God have we not we started calling it the way we see it and the way we want it and backing off from the battles because we didn't want to disturb people's flesh now are Christians too consumed with living life that we're losing sight of our kingdom purpose on earth. Absolutely. When we are more concerned about appeasing people than pleasing God, we have crossed the line. If so, then we are abdicating our authority and deceive, uh, being rendered powerless. This is our authority. This is where our power comes from. Our, our power as Christians, I mean, as citizens in America, come from our Constitution. But if we neglect or tear up or shred the Constitution, we lose our power as citizens. And we're seeing that, are we not? So if we get rid of this and we replace it with something else, man's doctrines, doctrines of demons and devils, then we're losing, abdicating our authority and we will become powerless. God does not want us powerless. Jesus did not give his life on a cross for a powerless church. He did not send the Holy Spirit to come and to indwell on us and come up on us so that we would do nothing. He gave us the Holy Spirit so we would change the world. Now turn with me to 1 Corinthians, please. I guess you can tell I've made a decision. That's for me and my house. We're going to serve God. 1 Corinthians 1, I mean 10, 1. Moreover, brethren, 
I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that was, uh, that rock was Christ. And with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things being our examples, to the intent that we should not lust. See, he's given us all these examples, right? To the intent that we should not lust after evil things as Christians, as they also lusted. For do not become idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up and to play, nor let, nor let us uh, commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt uh, Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain or murmur as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them, the Jews, as examples, that they, uh, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, if you're a child of God, then you have been given authority over all the powers of the enemy, according to Luke 10, 18, and 19. In Christ, we have been given a, the power to live free from the power of Satan, the power of temptation, and the power of sin. That is, that is too good to pass over. Christ has given us new converts, Christians, new believers. He has given us the authority over the power of Satan, temptation, and sin. Why don't people believe that? If we believed it, we wouldn't act like the world. We wouldn't live like the world, and we wouldn't be a mirror image of the world. We would be a mirror image of Christ. Be ye holy even as I am holy, says the Lord. Right? Jesus has given us, the church, individual Christians, the authority to act in his name, and he has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to say no to temptation. He has equipped us with everything we ha need to overcome temptation according to this scripture. With every temptation, he will make a way of escape that you may bear up under it. In other words, you won't give in to it, Right? But Satan does not want us walking in our spiritual authority. Why? He wants us tied up, bound up, so that we lose our freedom in Christ. So let me ask you this question. Are you really free today? Are you really, really free? Can you look into the image and the face of Jesus Christ and see that you're as free as he is? Then you've got some ways to go, right? Don't let that get you under condemnation that you're not all that in a bag of chips, yeah? But press on. Don't give up and settle for it. Well, this is what I've got. This is who I am. I'll always be an alcoholic. I'll always be a, a sex addict. Don't settle for that. You have Christ, the risen Christ. The resurrection power is on the inside of you to transform you and give you authority over everything the enemy throws at you. Satan does not want us walking in our kingdom spiritual authority. He wants us tied up. He wants us bound. So we'll lose our freedom. Turn with me to Judges, please. Judges 16, verse 19. You know the story. If you don't, I'll familiarize you with it. Uh, Samson was told by, his, uh, by the Lord... Do not lay a razor to your hair because this is where you get your supernatural strength. And uh, God gave him an anointing of strength. Now, let me slow down a little bit. Sometimes I run fast. You got an extra hour? Let's take it and spend it on the Lord. 
Preachers will use anything, won't they? They looked at Samson, and they said, where do you get your strength? Now, if he looked like the Hulk, you would understand. But the Bible says it's not by might nor by power, it's by my spirit. So that when they looked at him, he's like, you don't look like that much. But whenever he got a hold of a, a bone, the Philistine says he is all that. Because the, the, the Spirit of God gave him supernatural ability. Right? To do what? To strut his stuff? No. He gave, God gave Samson supernatural ability to have authority over the enemies of Israel, the Philistines. Let this soak in. God gave Samson authority over the Philistines. It does not matter what weapons are formed against the church, God has an arsenal in the church that will counteract the enemies of the church if they will walk in their kingdom authority and take up their mantle and do what God says. But if they should get seduced, if they should get entangled in the affairs of this life and get distracted and lose sight of what God has called them to do, then there's a good chance you will abdicate or lose your authority. So Samson goes in, he finds Delilah, he falls in love with her, or lust, I don't know which. I'd say lust. And so the enemy uses Delilah to get a hold of Samson's heart. Let's pick it up, verse 19. Now, she's already tempted him, I think, three times at this point to tell her what is the source of his strength. In verse 19, then she lulled Samson to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. When his hair left, his anointing lifted. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from the sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. Shake myself free. But he did not know that the, the Lord had departed from him. Some of the saddest words in the Bible. Then the Philistines took him and put, his, put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in the prison. Samson is a prime example of what happens to a believer once they decide to cross the line. He crossed the line, didn't he? He kept toying with temptation until temptation became sin and sin became bondage in his life. When he crossed the line, he got into the power of his own flesh. He said, I will shake myself. And he entered into temptation. Satan used Delilah. What is Satan using against you to seduce you? Satan used Delilah to seduce Samson to tell her the secret of his supernatural strength. As long as Samson walked with God, God gave him authority over the Philistines. But when he forsook God for that woman and gave in to temptation, he gave himself over, he gave into the seduction and gave himself over, himself over to the, his enemies. And his enemy says, that's all right, we won't do anything with you. No. What'd they do? They cut off his hair. They stripped him of his spiritual authority. And they stripped him of his liberty. They poked out his eyes. Now he cannot go on his own accord to do what he wants to do. And instead of going about destroying the Philistines, now they're pulling him around with chains and he cannot overcome them because the anointing is not helping him any longer. Let this get in your heart today. No longer was Samson in control of his enemies, but after his fall, they were in complete control of him. That's what sin does to us when we give in to temptation and we listen to the lies of Satan and we say, okay, we'll do that. You just abdicated your authority instead of being in power and authority in the heavenly places over the enemy. Now you're in bondage through the flesh to your enemy. You want to be free. You regret losing your authority or abdicating it, but now it's too late. You're in bondage. All right? 
Samson was now in bondage to his, his enemies, and they exploited his weaknesses. Don't you know? I mean, after all the humiliation that Samson did to the Philistines, he, he'd light foxes' tails on fire and send them through their cornfields, burn them up. He'd mock them in, in public. He'd ridicule them. And now they've got an opportunity to get back at him. Don't you think they made uh, f full, they, they took full advantage of that? Absolutely. I can imagine them getting him, his, his eyes are plucked out, his, his face is full of blood. Well, we're all out of time today, but before I leave you, I want to encourage you to be sure and tune in next week for the powerful conclusion, part two, crossing the line. There's so much more left in this message that will help you to understand not only the schemes of the devil and how he can play on our flesh, but how we can overcome him through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God that we know and keep, and that will keep us in authority as, as God's children here on earth. So be sure and tune in next week. Also, let your family and friends know if uh, Keys to Kingdom Living is new to your area. Uh, we're on Uplift TV Network. And we'd love for more people to find out we're here every Sunday at 4 p.m. East Coast time, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Let your family and friends know that they can find us here as well on Direct TV 379, as well as the other television stations that we're aired on by the grace of God. So uh, also, if you have any prayer requests and praise reports uh, about what God has been doing in your life through the prayers of our counselors here at church, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'll agree in prayer and stand with you until we see God's hand moving in your situation. We have seen so many miraculous testimonies of what God has done through the prayers of the intercessors here at Laurel Harvest Church North. If you'd like to know any more about this church and its ministry, you can find all that information on the uh, website, whcnorth.org. Also, my announcer will come and, and share some more things with you. But before I leave you, I want to remind you, keep your eyes on Jesus, especially in the day we're living in, and keep looking up because he's drawing nigh to us. We want to thank you for being a part of this television ministry. This week, our special offer includes a journal, which you can use to take sermon notes or record your spiritual growth. This is a great tool that can help you see areas in your life where you've grown through God's word being applied to your heart. Also included is a CD, Activate Your Faith. As a special bonus, we will also send you Pastor Asa's latest teaching, Addressing the Issue of Lack, entitled Breaking the Stronghold of Lack. Get the journal and the teaching on Activate Your Faith for a suggested donation of $25, and we'll include Breaking the Stronghold of Lack at no additional cost. Ask for offer number 322. Through your generous donations, we are able to fulfill the Great Commission to disciple the nations of the world. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968 Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512. 